Christiani in on the tackle for Connecticut. So it is going to be first down coming up for Holy Cross. They have the ball on their 32 yard line as we start the second half of this football game. Once South. Again, New England College football. This is Fitton Field on the campus of Holy Cross College in Worcester, Massachusetts. For tonight on TV 27 Sports, we'll be showcasing the 73rd meeting between the Crusaders of Holy Cross College as they play host to the Eagles of Boston College. This series started way back in 1896. And when you look at the record books, Holy Cross says that they have won 39 or BC has won 39, and they have won 30 with three games ending in ties. However, Boston College says, no, sir, they have won it 40 times, and Holy Cross has won it 29 with three ties. But one thing we do know, this will be the 73rd meeting. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Florek, and I'll be working with my partner, Gino Capaletti, on this telecast between Holy Cross and Boston College. As we look at these two teams, the Eagles come in, the heavy favorite. They have won 6 of 10, and for the Crusaders, they have won but one ball game in their first 10, and of course, this the final game of the 77 season for both ball clubs. Gino Capaletti, you've seen games where one team has come in as a big favorite. How do you check out this one? Well, in this kind of rivalry, Bob, you just cannot take the favorite uh, role and uh, figure you just have to take the field and win the game. And I know that Boston College is very uh, aware of this. Holy Cross coming off their first victory last week against the University of Connecticut had to give them whatever impetus they might need and whatever drive that they might need coming into this game. Had they lost the game coming into it, it may have had an effect. But I think that with their eye formation, their wishbone, the way they mixed it up offensively, I expect that Holy Cross will try to do the same thing. See if they can keep Boston College off balance. Boston College has uh, played a, a tougher schedule. They've played a little better football. They have to have the favorites role. Kenny Smith, an outstanding quarterback. They have lost one game, Boston College has, when Kenny Smith has started, and that has been against Pittsburgh. So he's a talented young quarterback and certainly is going to be uh, a threat in this ballgame. Looking at Holy Cross, what pluses do you find in their ball club, Gino? I like the way their defense has played at times, Bob. But once again, their whole story has been consistency and breakdowns within their own team. Even though they uh, amassed a lot of yardage at the uh, University of Connecticut last week, uh, throwing the ball and also on the ground, they could only come up with a couple of touchdowns. So once they get into scoring zones and scoring territory, they still have trouble getting in for the scores. But they can move the football, and they have a good defense at times as well. And we'll have the start of the 73rd meeting between Holy Cross and Boston College all coming your way here on TV 27 Sports. New England College football is brought to you by Har Lincoln Mercury, Worcester's only Lincoln Mercury dealer with comprehensive services for all your transportation needs. By Book Corner, the largest array of best-selling books. This is Bob Foraker along with Gino Capaletti here at Fitton Field on the campus of Holy Cross College. And in a few minutes, we'll have the opening kickoff of the 73rd meeting between the Crusaders of Holy Cross and the Eagles of Boston College. And right now, down at the midfield stripe, we have the two co-captains of Boston College, Kelly Elias and Bob Moore, meeting with the captain of Holy Cross, and that is number 35, Steve Hunt. However, we also have a few seniors out there for Holy Cross as we're waiting for the toss of the coin. Here's a list of the officials for this ball game assigned by the ECAC. The referee, Don Dwyer. The umpire is Ron Abdow. The linesman is Vince Presto. The line judge is Mike Stark. The field judge is John Goldsmith. The back judge, John Tierney. And the clock operator is George Pappas. Those are the officials for this, the 73rd meeting. And Gino? The Eagles have dominated this series the last 10 times out. They have completely uh, hammered the Crusaders with few exceptions. Well, going back to 1966, that certainly is a long time to be without a victory. But I know there have been some outstanding games throughout those 10 years, Bob, and the Holy Cross has uh, come close to snatching a victory away from uh, the favorite Boston College Eagles. So there's no reason to believe that uh, it can't happen today. Although Boston College does come in, as the favorite in this ballgame, as they have 
for the past few years and uh, playing some good football. Once again, Boston College has suffered some of the same doldrums that uh, Holy Cross has in their consistency as far as winning throughout a season. Now, Holy Cross has moved the football. They have shown good defense, but just have been unable to sustain it or get any form of consistency in order to win football games. Boston College, on the other hand, has come up with some super efforts on uh, on days where they have won football games in outstanding fashion. Then again, they have played poorly and have gone down to defeat. So once again, this uh, has been the thing that has bothered these teams. And we expect to see a hard fought game today. A lot of seniors playing their final game of collegiate football. And I can only tell you that uh, there's a lot of uh, nostalgia that surrounds a game like this. I can imagine uh, in previous years, and in games that this stadium has been packed and we expect that the stadium will fill up as the game goes on. And kicking off for Boston College will be number 92 Steve Giordano. He is a 6 1 215 pound sophomore from Woburn. The deep men for Holy Cross we have number 24 Brian Darty and he's back there and he'll be back along with number 32 Larry Ewald. Here we go the 73rd meeting underway. It's going down to Darty. Darty's going to take it on the two yard line. Coming to the near side gets up over the 10 the 15 and that's all. Going up to about the 15 yard line a return of 14 yards for Brian Darty as Jim Sheridan was the one bringing him down. So it will be first down for the Crusaders as they have the ball back on their 15 yard line to start this the 73rd meeting. Let's see who head coach Neil Wilwright will have at quarterback. It's the junior Peter Colombo number 14. In motion goes Ewald to the right side. Now he settles down. Colombo pitching Darty trying to turn the corner he does he picks up about five or six yards as he steps it up to the 21 yard line. Jack Kent number 44 in on the stop for Boston College. So a pickup of a half dozen off the running of Brian Darty on that option from Peter Colombo. It is second and four for the Crusaders. A little variable off of the uh, wishbone. I'm sure that they planned it that way. They needed a block from the tight end Smith there almost got it had they uh, been able to get that block Doherty would have had more running room. Colombo is going to keep it and he's going to get the first down as he stretches it up close to the 29 yard line. Peter Colombo the 5'8 180 pound junior out of Brockton Massachusetts on the carry let's check it out again. All right, Peter Colombo coming out to the left side on the option rides his fullback in there sees the big hole does a nice little pirouette to turn back to the inside and uh, picked up a first down good move by the quarterback Peter Colombo. Cliff Gaffney on the tackle against Colombo so now it's going to be first and ten from the twenty nine yard line of Holy Cross here in the opening minutes of play. Colombo handing it to Hunt and Hunt diving his way over the thirty five and up close to the thirty six yard line. Steve Hunt on the carry. Let's check the guys up front laying out the blocks for the Crusaders. We have Pat Kelly Mark Bates Bob Hurley Jack McGovern Joe DeSisto Jim Pendergast and the tight end Mike Smith in the backfield for the Crusaders Colombo Hunt Dirty and Ewald. Hagen and Hogan in on that last tackle. It sounds like a law firm. Second and four from the 35 yard line of Holy Cross. Colombo. Wow. He saw a ray of light Gino but then the light was turned out as Junior Hogan number 58 slapped him down a 6 2 225 pound sophomore along with Chuck Morris number 79 a whopping senior 6 5 255. Uh, he made an outstanding fake to his fullback Steve Hunt uh, had the play been designed for him to get the ball the hole was there immediately and then Colombo tried to follow him up that hole it was so huge but it closed up and for no gain. Third down and four. Ewald is flanked to the right in motion goes the fullback Hunt. Colombo dropping back in the pocket throwing and it is broken up. Broken up. It was intended for number 16 Morton and it was Jack Kent number 44 doing the job defensively. Let's see if we can watch that good D again. 
Colombo a little bit off mark here. As you can see, the curl in Van Morton being pulled back to the outside with the pass right into the path of the defender. So not a very good pass. Morton on the punt. It's a low one. Getting down inside the 40. Pete LaVoy was the deep man, and it is going to be blown dead on the 34-yard line. A punt of 31 yards off the foot of Bob Morton. And it will be first down for Boston College as the Eagles will get it for the first time in this ball game on their 34-yard line. Checking the Eagles this season, their record, six up and four down. Let's check the offensive line for Boston College. Godbolt, Swanky, Roark, Chaplick, Schmetting, Cantone, and Sherwin. In the backfield, we have Smith, Conway, O'Brien, and McCarty, the flanker. It is first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Ken Smith, the senior quarterback, he likes to put it in the air, and he's going to do it on the first play. He got a man open, and it's caught down there, and it is going to be Godbolt, and he is going to be wrapped up on about the 15-yard line. Glenn Barrett was the guy defending. Let's watch how Godbolt just went right by everyone. A 51-yard pass play from Smith to Godbolt. Godbolt just breaks clear right away from Peter George and uh, just running away with the ball. It was almost like Boston College came out feeling like Godbolt could get uh, loose deep like that. They had McCarty going up the slot or up the seam. He was open as well. So Boston College strikes immediately with a bomb. And the reason it's a timeout down to the field, Ken Smith has just surpassed the 2000 mark in passing this season and of course he's going to get to keep the football coming into the ball game he had passed for 1975 yards and now it's over the 2000 mark 2024 to be exact Smith with the ball and he's going to be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage and let's watch that good pursuit by Boston Holy Cross. Right, it's a mix, Haney. Up, mix up in the backfield here. Smith is looking for his back to come around. He's not there, so he just has to freeze, and the defense is there to corral him. A mix up in the offense of Boston College. By the way, Ken Smith, who's number two in the nation in passing, is the first Boston College player ever to pass for over 2,000 yards in a season. There's the pitch to Joe O'Brien. He's a tough one. O'Brien dives it to the five. Joe O'Brien, who started his career at Boston College as a quarterback, this year was moved to the tailback position, and he was moved in the game against, I believe it was Tulane or Army, Gino, one of those two games. And he's been running mighty hard ever since. I think uh, you're referring to the Tulane game that we uh, did Bob and uh, when he was installed there at halfback showed some fine running ability had it as a quarterback was not called on to run that much. It is going to be third and one down on the five yard line. Conway Conway touchdown. Oh, good running. Dan Conway goes in for his seventh touchdown of the season and the first score of this ball game. So with 10 35 left of the clock in the first quarter. Boston College gets up on the board first here in this the 73rd meeting. All right, he shakes off the tackles of uh, Mahalik and uh, Dugan there, bounces back to the outside. Good running, good instincts by Conway. Coming in now is number one, Tim Mormon. He's 24 out of 26 this season in the extra point department. He's a good one. He puts it up, and I put the hex on him, Gino. It's he off did. to the left. He's a premier kicker, but he just did not hit it to perfection that time. Looked so like with a timeout down in the field, Gino, it's six to nothing. Boston College up on Holy Cross. It looked like he was a little concerned about planting his uh, right foot. The ground is uh, torn up there. They have some sand thrown on by uh, that particular part of the field there where it is kind of chewed up and I think he just went in there a little cautiously feeling like he might slide and in doing so he just popped it did not follow through and the ball went off to the left. Here's Conway once again as you see those hits right at about the three four yard line. They were good solid hits but uh, no tackling and they probably expected Conway to go down with those pops but he just slid off to the right and into the end zone. It is going to be Steve Giordano kicking it off again for 
the Eagles, and we have the two deep men, Darty and Ewald for Holly Cross. And it's going to be Darty again, this time on the five. Trying the near side to the 10, look out, and he is going to be brought down by the same guy who got him on the opening kickoff of this ball game, Jim Sheridan, number 81. I think they'll be asking Boston College to kick over again. They were offside as they were running down, and the, one of the men got in front of the kicker, so the official immediately threw the fag down. And the fact that uh, Holy Cross did not get a good run back, I can expect we'll see them try it over. Getting back to the Boston College scoring drive, it only took them four plays to cover 66 yards. The big play, a 51-yard pass from Ken Smith to Mike Godbolt on the very first play from scrimmage was the catalyst in that scoring drive. So now it will be the Eagles kicking off again after the five-yard penalty offside on the kickoff. So number 92, Steve Giordano will kick it from his 35-yard line. He's from Woburn, Mass., a sophomore. He also plays tight end so far this season. As a tight end, he's caught eight passes for 121 yards, and one of them going for a score. Well, if he has any uh, aspirations to kick in the pros, he'll get a feel of what it's going to look like kicking from the 35 here. Here we go, 6-0 Boston College. Giordano bangs it down to Ewald. Ewald takes it on the goal line. He's going to run it out. He comes up to the 10 and up to the 12. You know, Gino, I don't know that if was he actually caught that on the one and stepped back. Had he downed it, who knows? Well, the momentum took him back into the end zone. He could have downed it, but uh, he put on the hesitation waltz there. Let's watch it again. Was looking for his comrade over there to signal whether he should carry it out or not. This is what the one of the two receivers, watch him as he looks at his, I can't see who the player is, but usually the other player who's receiving the punt or the kickoff will indicate to him whether to run it out or not because he is looking downfield to see how close the opposition is. Mike Gunn was the guy gunning down Ewall on that kickoff return after he brought it back 14 yards. Hunt getting the call and Chuck Morris, number 79, slapping him down. Steve Hunt from Littleton, Mass. on that last carry. He's picked up over 460 yards this season, and in his career at Holy Cross, he's gained over 2,060. Second in the all-time rushing list for Holy Cross, Steve Hunt, number 35. Brian Darty picking his way and bringing it over the 25 and up close to the 27-yard line. Maybe stretched it to the 28. Well, so far, Bob, Holy Cross has had success in moving the football on the ground. This is their second series, and uh, both times now they have found some running room and had some good hard running, so they have moved the football. Now it's a question of sustaining this. Nine and a half left in the first quarter. First and ten. Colombo. Hunt gets the call. Hunt over the 30 and up to the 32-yard line. Steve Hunt slanting the right side behind the blocking of McGovern, Casisto, and Pendergast. Let's check the defensive line for the Eagles of Boston College. The front four, Jim Sheridan, Chuck Morris, Fred Schmerlis, and Bob Moore. Here's the linebackers and the deep men, Kent Gunn, Hagen, Jamar, Elias, Murphy, and Ryan. It is going to be second and a half dozen from the 32. Colombo giving it to Ewall, and Ewall gets the first down as he goes to the 40-yard line. Jack Kent, a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore, makes the stop on Larry Ewall. Let's good, watch that run again good, by Ewall. He good picked move his by way. Ewall as he shakes off a tackle by Smurlis here. Big number 71. Once he got by him, he had some nice running room, so good move by Lee Ewald. It is going to be first down from the 40-yard line of Holy Cross. It's been a long season so far for the Crusaders. Colombo. Colombo is wrapped up by Al Hagen, number 36. Hagen is out of Tuckahoe, New York, a sophomore at six foot even. 
and tipping the scales at 200 pounds. We're at the eight minute mark here in the first quarter. Boston College up six to nothing. Flanker to the right, both ends split out. Ryan Doherty, Doherty brings it close to the 48 yard line. Hagan and Elias in on the stop. Kelly Elias, number 23, and Al Hagan, number 36. Uh, they're getting a lot out of this option, Bob. Uh, it's very close. Uh, Boston College playing it very tight. Colombo pitching at the last second. Doherty just making these receptions on these pitches at the last second. And then just good hard running by Doherty in this case, where he seems to be corralled. The Boston College seems to be in position for these options. But Holy Cross still managing to pick up yardage. Third and three. And with the football, getting the first down is Colombo. Let's check it again. Watch this blowout up front. Well, here we watch Colombo once again. Just a straight quarterback. Uh, it's not even a drive, maybe not even a sneak. It's uh, just a quarterback up the middle, as they call it. Sometimes they'll see a big hole in that defense, and they figure the quickest way to hit it is take the snap from center and run right up there. Many times a quarterback will just pat the cheek of the center, indicating that he will go in that direction immediately. Bill Johnson, who just came in the ball game, moves out and flanks way out to the right, and we got whistles. The clock is stopped with 632 here in the first quarter. A delay a game, I believe, will be called on Holy Cross, taking too much time. So they'll be assessed five yards. It will now be first and 15, the ball back in Holy Cross territory on their 49-yard line. Bob Morton is going to be the split in out to the right side. Johnson in motion. Now Smith, the tight end, goes out about an extra five on the left side. And with it is Larry Ewald finding some daylight and getting down to the 40, the 35, down to the 34-yard line of Boston College. Larry Ewald, who hails from Peru, New York, on a good piece of running that time. Let's check it out as he covers some good real estate. Well, a most determined run. Good, good action by uh, Colombo. He spins right around on a counter play. Hands back to Ewald. And he goes the distance for a big first down, a most determined run by this fine running back. Holy Cross picking up yardage on the ground, seem undaunted in this case, and very determined offensively. Bob Moore and Al Hagan made the stop on Ewald. It's first down from the 34. And with it this time is the fullback, Hunt, and Hunt grinds his way close to the 31-yard line. Clint Gaffney, number two, making the stop on Steve Hunt. As we peek at the clock, there's 547 and winding down here in the first quarter. Boston College leading six zip. Boston College has had their hand on the football only once, and they marched in for the score. Colombo pitching. Darty. Darty down to the 25 and goes out of bounds down close to the 21 yard line. Paul Murphy, number 12 from Westwood, Mass., the one pushing him out of bounds. Let's watch that scramble by Brian Darty, number uh, 24. Fine block by uh, Steve Hunt here. Let's watch it right there. You saw it on the cornerback coming up, and that enabled. The runner to get downfield in that case, uh, Doherty. What a block by Steve Hunt, who has just had a fantastic year running the football and in blocking. A very tough football player. This the 11th play on the drive. Steve Hunt on the first and 10. And Hunt picks up about three yards. Linebacker Jack Kent slams him down. It is going to be a gain of four, second and six for Holly Cross, as they have it down on the 17-yard line of Boston College. The Eagles coming into this ball game, a heavy favorite, and this the 73rd happening between these two schools. It goes to Hunt again, and Hunt gets it down inside the 15. Down close to the 14-yard line. 
Steve Hunt, the six foot, 190 pound senior, brought down by Hagen, Hogan, and Gaffney. It is going to be third and a short three. The ball placed in the 14 yard line of Boston College. Well, we've mentioned the good hard running. That offensive line really doing a job. A big down for him here. Third and a short three. Colombo's going to keep it. He got the first down. He got the touchdown. Peter Colombo going 14 yards for the score on a superb play. And it's all tied at six apiece with 4.04 remaining in the first quarter. And here it is on replay. You can call it, Gino. Peter Colombo, he's going option with the wishbone, coming out to the left side. He fakes to Steve Hunt, sees the big hole, takes advantage of it, has the no decision to make because when he decided to run with it, he said he was going to get into that end zone by Hooker Crook. He got there. What a drive by Holy Cross, starting way back at their own tent, going into the teeth of the strong wind. And we got a good extra point. Holy Cross takes the lead. What do you know? Mike Smith splitting the uprights and with 4.04 remaining in the first quarter, it is Holy Cross 7 and Boston College 6. Zenith presents a message to end. Let's watch that 14 yard touchdown run once again by Peter Colombo. This is the equalizer. Watch him ride Steve Hunt. Defensive tackle goes for it. Colombo comes out. He's looking for the pitch, but he sees that he has the take up the middle and in for a 14 yard touchdown. Point after by Smith is good. Holy Cross takes the lead, 7-6, to 6, 404 to go in the first period. It is going to be Mike Smith kicking it off for Holy Cross. Mike Curry, number three, and Paul McCarty, the two deep men. It is going down to McCarty. He's going to take it on the 20. Steps up to the 25, the 30. He can run it, and he's going to go to the 35. Got it close to the 36-yard line. Paul McCarty returning at 16 yards. Herb Mahalik was the one bringing him down. Looking at that scoring drive by Holy Cross, they marched 87 yards, took them 13 plays, and they chewed up six minutes and 17 seconds on the clock, Gino. Just a fantastic, well-executed drive by Peter Colombo and the whole offense of Holy Cross. Mike Smith is going to go to the air. He fires it, and it is complete to Sherwin. Tim Sherwin on the reception for Boston College. That's his seventh reception this season. Dana Cresta in on the tackle. Let's check the defensive unit for Holy Cross. Here's the front four, Steve Gannon, Jay Hallett, Mike McDonald, and Mike Haney. In the backfield, we have the linebackers. We have Presta, Juggin, Janik, the deep men, Island Barrett, George, and Mahalik. It is going to be second and five. Ken Smith pitching to Joe O'Brien, and O'Brien is going to be wrapped up by number 47, Chris Duggan. Duggan out of South Bend, Indiana, a 6'2", 210-pound sophomore in on that crisp tackle that time for Holy Cross. Now that fine offensive performance by Holy Cross should really inspire the defense now for Holy Cross here as Boston College knows that they got a ball game on their hands. I think they knew that before they came out here, but now with that superb drive and a go-ahead touchdown, they know they've got some work to do here. Third and four, O'Brien in motion. Ken Smith back. He's got plenty of time. Throwing for O'Brien. Almost intercepted by Peter George, number 21. Peter George coming in with a superb attempt. And now the Eagles of Boston College are going to have to try to punt it away. Let's watch that play again. Here right. it is on replay. Kenny Smith going back to pass. He has Joe O'Brien in motion. Now, O'Brien's going to go up in the seam. Watch how long Kenny Smith waits. He knows it's too late. He just throws in an area where he felt O'Brien should be, but it was well covered. He tried to force that football. Fourth and four. It is Walton kicking. Jim Walton bangs a good one. Oh, my, did he crank that one up. 
He's number 10th in the nation in punting. He just socked that some 58 yards. Jim Walton, with the win to his back, voted a good one. He's the top punter in the East, and he's number 10 in punting in the nation. Holy Cross once again starting now at their own 20. The last time they started at their 13, marched 87 yards for a touchdown, mainly on the ground and only on the ground. That takes a lot out of you, but if they can get one drive started again, it will certainly help their overall momentum. First down from the 20. Colombo on the pass, complete to Smith, and Smith is going to bring it up over the 30, and up close to the 34, a gain of 14 yards. All right, a variable again off of that same option play. There's so many things that you can do from there, and they will not become stereotyped and allow Boston College to start reading them. They send men in motion. They'll stay with the wishbone. Colombo will keep. He'll pitch, or in this case, he'll fake the dive, look like an option, rear up, and hit Smith on a slanted pattern. They've got Boston College off balance. It is going to be first down and 10 with 235 left in the first quarter. The ball in the 34 yard line of Holy Cross. Peter Colombo at quarterback. Handing it. Bumble. Boston College recovers. Al Boston College coming up with it. Number 36, Al Hagan. Jumping on that popped up football by Larry Ewald. And here it is again. Let's check it out. All right, the one thing that they couldn't do was hurt themselves. And in this case now, Colombo handing back to Ewald. He has the ball stripped from him and a fumble recovered by Boston College. So as they had something going, once again, the thing they didn't want to do was turn the ball over to Boston College, especially in such good field position. 2.24 left of the first quarter. Holy Cross up, 7-6. Joe O'Brien is going to make it down to about the 35. It is Howlett and Jank in on the stop for the Crusaders. Well, Gino, the Eagles came into this ball game about a five touchdown favorite, but so far the Crusaders have played with a lot of pride and a lot of guts. No question about it. You can sense it from here, and I'm sure that the feeling is even more intense on the field, but Holy Cross playing inspired. I think we have to see Ken Smith now starting to throw the football. They're having difficulty running it against this defense. And Smith is going to go to the air. He fires to O'Brien, good. And it was Glenn Barrett socking O'Brien out of bounds. He had the first down marker, I believe. They got the first down, but we'll have to wait and see. Very close. O'Brien coming out of the backfield in motion once again. The lone setback. And uh, then going out on a flat pattern. Takes a lot out of a receiver when he's in motion and running patterns a lot. O'Brien, not the fleetest of foot, but getting a lot of work in today's ball game. It is third and one. The ball of the 26-yard line of Holy Cross. Boston College on offense. Ken Smith handing to Conway. Dan Conway getting the first down as he goes to the left side behind the blocking of Swanky, Rourke, and Chaplick. It's going to be a first down for the Eagles. That is their second first down of the ball game. Whereas Holy Cross has mustered up seven first downs. Mike McDonald bringing down Conway on that last play. All right, the strong wind at their back once again. Time running out. We might see Boston College try to take advantage of that wind and go to the air, this high formation. Conway, good piece of running by Dan, the sophomore from Haverhill, who seems to be improving every week, brings it down inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. Peter George and Mike McDonald bringing down the hard-running Dan Conway. Conway weighs in at 220 and stands up at 6-2. He's the top rusher this season for the Eagles. Second and a couple from the 17. Ken Smith handing to O'Brien. O'Brien dives it down to the 10. The whistle had already sounded before the ball squirted loose. Peter Very George close. was the one causing the fumble, but the whistle had already sounded, Gino. Very close, though. Uh, Boston College now staying with their eye formation, giving it to the lead back, Conway, on the first down, and then uh, faking to Conway, giving it to O'Brien, but staying mainly in that formation. They seem to be more comfortable with it right now, feeling like they can run the football with this particular set. First and 10 from the 11-yard line with 20 seconds left in the quarter. 
Conway. Conway pulls his way down close to the six-yard line. Chuckett and Howlett bringing down Conway. I don't believe we'll get off another play in this period. As we're winding down, we see up on the clock, two seconds, one. There's the whistle, and that is the end of the first quarter here from Fitton Field. And right now, it's been a big surprise with the Crusaders of Holy Cross leading over the heavily favored Eagles of Boston College by one, seven to six. As we come back to Fitton Field, we're set to start the second 15 minutes stance of this ball game. Holy Cross leading Boston College seven to six. When the second quarter starts up, it will be second and five for Boston College down on the six and a half yard line of Holy Cross. And Gino Capaletti, so far, Holy Cross has had the ball on 20 plays, Boston College 13. They've dominated the game. Boston College has struck quick and a long bomb, 71 yard pass, and uh, they got a quick score in four plays. Holy Cross had to grind it out, but it was a very impressive drive. I thought it was very nice of the both of the two teams to come down here in front of us in the field of play right now. Second and five from the six and a half yard line of Holy Cross as they dig in on defense against this tough Boston College ball club. Ken Smith, the quarterback, Conway, and he's going to be brought down as he gets close to the four. Gannon in on the stop, number 60. Steve Gannon bringing down Conway. So now it's going to be third down and three. And the third down conversions for Boston College, they're two for three so far. Ken Smith reads the defense. Conway gets the call, and Conway gets it down close to the two-yard line. It's going to be shy, I believe, of the first down. Let's see what head coach Joe Yakika will do. Well, I'm almost sure you'll see him go for it. Uh, the first down or the score right. without the field goal attempt. They're at the three-yard line. They have to get to the one-yard line for a first down. And, of course, three yards for a touchdown. <laughs> Big call for the defense here of Holy Cross. Here we go. Fourth. Smith with it. Smith is keeping it. Smith gets the first down as he goes close to the goal line. No touchdown, Bob. Well, we're going to have a measurement, I'm sure. Kenny Smith rolling out. He had the option to pitch it or keep it, and uh, very wise in keeping it in a situation like that. He saw the opening, Let's and watch I'm it sure against, that he know. thought he could get right in for a touchdown. Let's watch him now. With his full house backfield, he fakes the Conway, he rides on the line of scrimmage, turns it in, but Duggan comes up very hard to make the stop. And Boston College picks up the first down by just about a shade less than the length of the football. It was Duncan and Mahalik in on that tackle, so it's going to be first and goal from the one for the Eagles as they're trying to get the go-ahead score in this ball game here in the second quarter with 13.33 on the clock. Ken Smith at quarterback, full house backfield. Conway, I believe it's going to be very close. His legs seemed to go in, Gino, right, as he the did the cartwheel, did. but the ball did not. Conway dove up in the air, tried to uh, dive in for the touchdown. He was stopped cold and <laughs> driven right back down. Let's check it His again. His legs went over, but he is upper torso, and the ball stayed inside. So what an outstanding defensive stand by Holy Cross here. It's almost inevitable that they might have to give way because of this uh, surge by Boston College, but let's watch. Here's Smith. And Smith goes in. Smith goes in for the score. Ken Smith brings it in on the quarterback keep. And Boston College has now moved out in front 12 to 7 with 12.51. Let's watch that score again. Here it is. Ken Smith pushing it in. Well, 
watch the quarterback sneak. Kenny Smith in for the touchdown. We can expect to see Boston College. There it is. Kenny Smith just driving behind his center. We can expect to see Boston College go for the two point play and try to get their 14th point here. Usually in this case, we watch Boston College. They like to line up on the left side, almost to the left hash mark. And uh, usually Kenny Smith will roll out and try to throw in a flat or run himself. But with this eye formation, he could cross you up by running. So let's watch it. Here's the two-point conversion. Smith putting it in the air. And it is complete to Godbo. Nice diving catch by Mike Godbo as he beat his man, Bob Ireland, for the two-point conversion. That was a perfect pass for where the defensive man, Ireland, was lined up. Godbo goes into the end zone, then breaks back. He comes back. Watch him on the top of your screen. And that's exactly where Kenny Smith had to throw the ball away from the cornerback, in this case, Ireland, forcing uh, Godbo to dive back for it. Should he catch it, he would still be in the end zone. It's called a corner comeback and a short one. I was uh, very apprehensive about them coming up with that when I saw the play start because I thought the pressure was on Kenny Smith. Looked like he did not have that much room to throw the ball, but he laid it in a perfect spot, and Gold Godbold, I might add, made a superb catch. So Boston College back out on top, 14 to 7. Steve Giordano will kick it up into the wind. And it is Brian Darty and Larry Ewald, the two deep guys for Holy Cross. The wind holding it up. Ewald on the run of the coat. Oh, that's dangerous. He couldn't quite catch up to it, Gino, as the wind stuff put the old brakes on the ball as it was coming down. And once again, number 81, who's been doing a great job on kickoff coverage, Jim Sheridan down there. Well, you had to be very careful in electing to field that, but once again, it's a live ball. And, uh, Ewald, of course, knowing that, ran up there and tried to field it as the ball was just dropping rapidly. So he looked they like made the play anyway. He looked like a center fielder coming in on the Texas Leaguer trying to catch up to it. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. And it is Steve Hunt plowing his way close to the 34. Al Hagan, number 36, in on the stick defensively. Getting back to that Boston College scoring drive, the one that has now put him ahead, they took 10 plays to cover 36 yards, and they used up four minutes and 33 seconds. It was all set up when they recovered a fumble. The recovery was made by Al Hagan off the fumble of Larry Ewald. Colombo pitching to Doherty, and Doherty is ridden out of bounds up near the 36-yard line. That time, uh, Ewald was out leading the play. Jack that Kent on the stop. Was unable to get that uh, hook block on Kent, who was riding uh, Ewald out with it, forcing uh, Doherty to go very wide. But once again, Holy Cross staying with that wishbone throughout this game. And it's a, it's a set that has bothered Boston College with other teams. It is third and five. Colombo, Doherty bobbling it, goes out of bounds. He's got enough for the first down, though. He actually dribbled that for about seven yards, Gino. The only thing he didn't do was bring it behind his back, like my partner on New England College basketball, Bob Cousy, used to do. Oh, if he could have done that, he would have had it right back in the field of play. So here we see Doherty. Once again, a, uh, a decision made by Colombo whether to keep her pitch at the last minute as he was being hit. He pitched it back, and he's doing an excellent job with this uh, decision. And Doherty that time had it, but when he turned the corner, lost control, and, of course, picked up yardage with it. So once again, they stay with the option, the counter, and in the wishbone. Cross now with eight first downs. It is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Mike Smith. He had it for a moment, but Doug Alston, number 19, shook the ball loose when he really popped the pads to Mike Smith. Well, I'm sure Smith felt like he should have uh, held on to that one. Alston was there, but he was a little late with it. And uh, once again, another variable off that set of the wishbone where they ride the fullback, give it to the fullback, run the option to throw the slant pattern. And they've been doing it effectively. Second and 10 from the 43-yard line of Holy Cross. Play action, Colombo looking, throwing long to Doherty. 
and it is broken up. Broken up by number 23, Kelly Elias, one of the tri captains for Boston College this season. And speaking of another tri captain, Rich Scudellari, he was voted yesterday, Gino, one of the top players in the East by the ECAC. And of course, he was operated on about a week or so ago. Here's the replay. It's a fine tribute to a fine athlete and gentleman, Rich Scudellari. As you saw, Brian Doherty going downfield, Colombo laying it up there. Kelly Elias, one of the finer defensive backs in Eastern Collegiate football, back there to cover. Third down and 10. Hunt goes in motion left side, and it comes back to Ewall on the right, and he brings it over the 45 to the 46, and now Holy Cross will have to punt it away. Bob Mort will attempt the punt. He's been averaging 33.9 yards per kick this season. And Pete LeBoy will be the deep man, number 88. LeBoy in single safety. Good punt by Mort. LeBoy going back, takes him to the 15. Now comes back upstream and brings it up to the 20-yard line before he is brought down by Ireland. Bob Ireland, number 46, in on the stop. A punt of 41 yards by Morton and a return of five by LeBoy. As we check the clock, 11-19 left of the first half. Boston College got the lead 14-7. Here's a sports reminder here on TV 27. Round ball action coming up. New England College basketball. Our regular season game to get underway. The first of the 77-78 season will be Tuesday. Holy Cross and St. Anselm's at 7.30. No gain that time. Anthony Brown was the man who started to take it, the deep man in the eye. He slipped and went down, and then he had to get back up, and there he is, number 15. Couldn't get out of the starting blocks, Gino. If he was in the 100-yard dash that time, he would have gone about 25 while the guys were breaking the tape. Here's our next game on New England College basketball. Holy Cross and St. A's, and then on Thursday night, the Big Green of Dartmouth will be coming to town to take on the Crusaders. Both games at 7.30. And both on TV 27, New England's number one college sports station. Ken Smith putting it in the air, and it is intercepted. Mahalik with it. Mahalik bringing it down to the 20, picking his way, and he's going to step it down close to the 15-yard line. That is an outstanding interception, Robert. That's the fourth like one this season, Gino, for Herb. Excuse it looked me. like he was beat. Herb Mahalik, the outside linebacker, gaining depth. Watch Kenny Smith now as he sprints out left, hesitates. He throws it. He's got his man. It feels like he's got Peter LaBoy out there. Mahalik goes up one-handed, comes down with the ball, keeps his balance, keeps possession of the ball, and does some fine running. Just an outstanding interception by the young man. He returned at 13 yards, as I mentioned, his fourth interception this season. That's the 18th time that Ken Smith has been intercepted. On the draw, it is Palumbo. Palumbo gets it down to about the eight-yard line. This mini quarterback, Peter Colombo, has been absolutely superlative to date in this ball game. Mike Gunn is the one that brought down Peter. So now it is going to be second and two to go for the first down. The ball in the eight-yard line of Boston College here in the second quarter. Boston College protecting a 14-7 lead. Doherty. Doherty getting the first down. It's going to be first and goal for the Crusaders. The Crusaders first and goal inside the five. Let's check that first down run again by Doherty from the end zone right, camera. From the wishbone, a power slant. Right, Doherty follows his two backs. Steve Hunt and Ewald. I like the previous play where Colombo faked to Hunt on the left side and then quarterback drawed it right up to the right side. Good move. Colombo, Doherty again, and Doherty's going to make it close to the 30-yard line. Brian Doherty, who was the leading rusher for the Crusaders last year, he's been injured part of this season in the early going. Coming into this ball game, he had picked up 228 yards. That time, Junior Hogan was the one leading the tackle for Boston College. It's second and goal from the three-yard line. They're digging in down in the trenches. Colombo checks the defense. 
Colombo keeping it. No. Gets nowhere whatsoever. Brought himself in a bit too tight that time, Gino, and they really gave good defense on that option. They wouldn't allow him to pitch it at the last moment. Now, once again, he's been making these last-minute decisions, and most of the time he has been correct. This was one case where he decided to keep it when he probably should have pitched it. He tried to cut on that uh, bad turf there right in the middle, too, which prevents him from cutting without sliding. It is third down and goal. Colombo pitching. Good habit. It is Darty, and he steps in for the score. Good block once again by Steve Hunt as he chopped down Kelly Elias coming up to support. I thought it was just beautifully executed. Well run, good faking. They have Boston College off. Now watch Peter Colombo as he spins out. Now he'll fake. He'll fake the Ewald up the middle. He'll go out. He'll pitch right. Watch that block by Steve Hunt. That's the block that enabled that play to go. So now the score is 14 to 13. Boston College leading. Mike Smith in to try to get the equalizer. Colombo will spot the ball. The ball is down, the kick is up, and we got a tie game. It's all tied with 8.26 remaining in the first half. Boston College 14 and Holy Cross 14. To learn. Here it is, the score. Holy Cross 14, Boston College 14 here in the second quarter. Let's very quickly check out that equalizer on the run by Brian Darty. Hunt laying the block and watch it. Right here on Elias. Made it look easy, Gino. Well, I'll tell you, it speaks for itself. You can uh, talk about it, describe it, but you can see right there what it meant. Smith kicking off. And it is McCarty. He's going to run it out. Now he's going to hand it to Curry, and he's going to be blasted down on about the 10-yard line. Chris Duggan and Bill Wright doing the job as they got him. Let's watch that kickoff again. All right, they have the reverse all set up. Good, strong kick right back out. McCarty comes out. It's all set up. Now he hands it off. Holy Cross played it beautifully. Had McCarty faked it and kept it, I think he might have had something for that, my friends, is second guessing, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> First down and 10. The ball's out of the 10-yard line of Boston College. Smith handing to Conway, and Conway finds it a bit sticky as he picks up a couple of hard-earned yards. Dana Cresta leading the charge defensively along with Mike Haney. Checking out that Holy Cross scoring drive. First of all, it was set up by the fourth interception this season by Herb McHallock. And Holy Cross went 16 yards in five plays, and they used two minutes on the clock. The last three coming off the running of Brian Doherty. Second and eight. Ken Smith is going back into the pocket, throwing, and it is complete. It is complete. Fumble. And it is the receiver pouncing on that football and that is Conway Conway made the reception then he lost the ball and he had to scramble back and dive on it Duggan was the guy who made the hit to cause the fumble I sent Conway out of the backfield and running a backside pattern parallel to the line of scrimmage running away from the flow throwing back to him Holy Cross holding their ground defensively making a key tackle on him and also forcing a fumble almost came up with a recovery just an inspired game played by the Crusaders thus far. Third and seven. Smith is back. He's looking. He's got time. He's throwing. And oh, it is yes. intercepted. Intercepted by Mahalik. Oh, oh, what a catch by Herb Mahalik. That's his fifth interception this season. His second in the ball game. And we're going to watch it all again. Kenny Smith once again forcing it. He throws it high. It goes off the fingertips of Godbolt. Mahalik comes up with his second interception of the ball game, putting the Crusaders in outstanding field position. What a tremendous game. Holy Cross, Gino, is averaging almost six yards per play on first downs. First down from the 30. Bumble.
Campbell. There's a pileup down close to the 29-yard line. It is Boston College recovering. Boston College coming up with the football down at the bottom of the pile. Looked like it was just mishandled. I don't believe it was any sort of hit that took place in there that forced that fumble. It is number 80, and that is Mike Gunn coming up with the football. So Boston College comes right back now. Things just not going their way. When I referred to a tremendous game before, I was, of course, talking about the underdog Holy Cross. Boston College having difficulty in getting themselves untracked, but as they have proven throughout this year, they come back strong in second halves when they are even down, so they have to be aware of this team. And Boston College letting it all hang out on that play. That fumble may have dampened the, the high spirits of Holy Cross temporarily, and Boston College took advantage of it, just blowing it right up the middle. Kenny Smith heading back to Anthony Brown. Big hole opened up by that Boston College offensive line, and he picks up a good 20 yards there, now putting them in good position at the 46. 6.33 left of the half. It's tied at 14. Dan Conway picking his way and plowing his way, bringing it up close to the 48-yard line. And on the stop, we have Mike McDonald and Chris Duggan. McDonald, number 72, and Duggan, 47. It is going to be second and eight, a gain of a couple. Bill Wright is now in the ball game. And coming out was Mike McDonald. Ken Smith back, being rushed, gets it away. Conway is going to be nailed as he gets it into Holy Cross territory, just getting it down to about the 49-yard line of Holy Cross. Bill Wright, who just came in the ball game, a senior who hails from Chicago, made the stop on Conway after the reception. Well, you have to credit that Holy Cross secondary, Bob. They really are doing an outstanding job of covering and in position. That time, uh, Kenny Smith looking for Godbolt on a curling pattern. Could not find him because of the outstanding coverage. Had to go to his release man, Conway, out on the left flat. And then Holy Cross right there to stop him from any surmountable game. Smith is now 6 for 9 in passing. And it is overthrown, intended for number 11, Mike Godbolt. So now it's going to be fourth down and six from the 49 and a half yard line of Holy Cross. And we'll look for number 68, Jim Walton, the senior from Jessup, Pennsylvania, to punt the football. He'll be punting into the wind. Bob Ireland and Glenn Verrett, the two deep men. Ireland on the near side, Verrett on the far. Walton hits it high in the sky. And it's going to come down and take a Holy Cross bounce, and Kelly Elias will down it on the 27 and a half yard line of Holy Cross. Want to know what a great line means in football? A punt of 23 yards as Walton was kicking it into the wind. He hit it high, and the wind did the rest. So Holy Cross takes over with 5.01 left in the first half, and it's tied between Holy Cross and Boston College at 14. Peter Colombo at quarterback. Gives it to the fullback, Steve Hunt, and Hunt brings it up to the 30-yard line. Fred Schmerlis, number 71, a 6'3 senior who stands on the scale and shows a reading of 270 pounds. He and Bill Orenberger with a two in on the stop. This defensive front four for Boston College averaging 242 pounds per guy. Second and eight, Colombo in trouble. He's gonna be brought down back on the 26 yard line. Peter Colombo being wrapped up back on the 26 yard line. Well, you can see the uh, Boston Jim College Sheridan. defense now, Bob, starting to uh, take over that line of scrimmage and starting to play that wishbone offense, containing it a little better as the game goes on. We might see Holy Cross, if they continue to have difficulty, go to the I formation, but Boston College defense now starting to take control. Third and a dozen. Colombo gets Morton. 
Morton over the 35, bangs his way over the 40 for the first down. Good reception by Bob Morton, and then some tough running. He well, took it right to him, and let's watch it. Well run by Morton out on the uh, right flank here in the bottom of your screen. He lets the two receivers go downfield, and he cuts back behind him. It's an under pattern. They had the defense of Boston College way back, and also the linebackers with good depth. Morton just waits, tries to lull them away a little bit, then cuts back in over the middle all alone. Good play. Colombo is now two for five for 30 yards in passing. Here's Hunt getting the call, and Hunt brings it to the 45-yard line. Time-wise, here in the first half, 322 and winding. It's tied at 14. Schmerlis and Orenberger in on that last stop for Boston College. The Eagles came into this ball game with a record of six up and four down with some good wins this season. For Holy Cross, they only have produced one victory this year, and that was last week against Connecticut, 14 to three. Second and seven, Colombo pitching flags all over the field. Jardy brings it as he slides to the 50. And we will have a offside on Holy Cross. Kelly Elias made the stop on Darty, but it will be offside on Holy Cross. The referee for this ball game, Don Dwyer, the umpire, Ron Abdow. The linesman is Vincent Presto. The line judge, Mike Stark. The field judge is John Goldsmith. The back judge, John Turney. And the clock operator, George Pappas. These officials have been assigned by the ECAC. And speaking of the ECAC, it has been an, assent, an exception since 1938. Second down, 12. It is going to be second and a dozen, Gino. The ball in the 40-yard line of Holy Cross. on the option gives it to Ewald and Ewald is banged out of bounds by Doug Alston up on the 45 maybe he got it over the 45 to the 46 Boston College generally plays the option play quite well against teams that I've seen them play they have a, a nice defensive way of containing option run plays Colombo posing a threat as he uh, is able to pitch at the last second. That's throwing Boston College off a little bit. And he's been quite accurate with that pitch. Third and six for Holy Cross. Colombo throwing. He got his man, Morton. And Morton is going to get it down inside the fourth. 